Okay, so this video is a, a quick video, a pro tip, as you might say, about citation management software. What is citation management software, you ask? Well, that's a great question. Uh, let's say you're writing a paper. Here's your paper that you're writing in Google Docs, uh, as per my previous video on how to use the Google tools to sort of hack your productivity. And you get to a point where you've written a sentence and you need to uh, put a citation because it's something that you learn from somebody else or it's a quotation from a, from another work. Well, in-text citation formats vary depending on your discipline, and what style you're following, but let's say you want to choose a common one like APA or MLA. And uh, you know, you pick your in-text citation style to be parenthetical and you put, um, you know, the author's last name, comma, the date, and then you keep writing, blah, 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 right? At the end of the paper, you have to put in bibliography as a title, and then you have to go look up the citation from somewhere else and type it in manually. Smith, 1994, uh, the title of the paper, paper I read, title of the journal, best academic journal, and you have to put the page numbers at least, page 20, 23 to 24, and you probably have to put like, you know, the volume three, and then maybe it has an issue number, 40, etc. right? So you have to know all of that information. You have to somehow track it down, then you have to type it in manually every time. So maybe you've written a few papers, you have some sources that you use a lot, you can kind of copy and paste. But depending on whether you're using MLA, APA, the uh, Society for American Archaeology format, current anthropology, which is the, the uh, American Association of Anthropologists um, style, or any number of other journal styles, you're going to have to go in and change some of the formatting. Maybe this has to be bold. Maybe this has to be in italics, right? Maybe you have to start with the date. Maybe the, the name of the first author needs to be on the top lane by itself. And, uh, you know, the date has to be indented like that. So all of that can get complicated really fast, especially as you get into your upper division coursework and you have to write term papers for multiple classes. And eventually, if you do go on to graduate school or even into an industry that requires you to write uh, the kinds of works that require this kind of citation, you know, you're going to see quickly the benefits of having a piece of software that manages all of your citations for you. So we here at SDSU have several tools that are at your disposal. Some of them are free. Some of them are freemium, and some of them are free while you're a student, but then are going to start to, to, you know, you have to pay for them in some way or another. When I was a student, basically EndNote, which is this first one right here, was the only thing, only game in town, and so I paid for it out of pocket, and I used that uh, as an undergraduate to write my, my term papers, and eventually uh, even into my um, master's program, I used EndNote. By the time I started getting further along, there were lots of other options. Um, Mendeley is another option that we have available for you here at SDSU. So this is the EndNote help pages on the SDSU libraries, um, basically pages for this kind of stuff. And Mendeley is another one that you can have. Both of them have freemium options. They, um, if you go to this, uh, one under EndNote, you know, which citation tool should I use? They have some reasons to choose EndNote, some reasons to choose Mendeley. And then finally, there's Zotero. And Zotero came along as I was in my PhD program. It's a co pretty much completely free. You can have it help you store PDFs that you download, but that's really not necessary. I don't do that at all. Um, and it's really flexible, and it is the only one that currently works as a plugin for Google Docs. And so for those reasons, the fact that I use it, um, the fact that it works with Google Docs, and the fact that it's completely free and you can continue to use it after you graduate with no worries that you're gonna lose some access, 
Um, it's the one that I personally recommend. There is nothing wrong with EndNote or Mendeley, and if you like those, if you're already using those, there isn't really a reason to change other than, especially if you're using the um, version of EndNote X9, which is not free, but you're getting a free license through, well, not free, you're paying for it in your student fees um, while you're here at SDSU. If you like that, that's gonna go away once you graduate. So you might wanna consider moving over. You can easily export and share references between the systems so you're not really completely locked in one or the other. But you do have to learn how to use them and I'm going to show you how to use Zotero. Now there is a library guide for Zotero. It's a, a PDF here and I'll include a link uh, below so you can kind of follow along with this uh, guide as well as how I'm going to show you here in a bit. Uh, first you want to do is to go to Zotero.org and click the download button. Um, whether you're on Mac, Windows, or I'm personally on Linux, there is a uh, version which is great. And you go to the download tab, it already figures out where your system is, and you just download it and install it. And once you open it up, you'll get a, well there won't be anything in here because you won't have any <laughs> citations yet. I happen to have close to 3,000 citations in my main Zotero repository here. So this is what it basically looks like. And if you click on any one of them, you get this little information tab and you can see, you can say what kind of work it is, a journal article, everything from journal articles through books, through emails and uh, hearings and patents and manuscripts and all kinds of stuff are available there. Title of the work, author, author, and potentially if it's a book, you, there could be editors here too. If you do how I show you to get the citations in automatically, it'll even pull the abstract in. It'll tell you the name of the journal, the volume, the issue, the pages, the date, and a whole bunch of other really useful things like DOI, ISSN, and other things that librarians or doing library searches could be useful for you. Um, and it gives you a little icon. So the little paper here shows me that it's a journal article. Shows me that this one is a book, right? Or this one's a book all these ones that look like little books, right? And here is a map and it has a different little icon of it over here. Here is a, uh, uh, a proceedings of a conference, right? So it's kind of useful. Uh, you may notice that there are little carrots. Some of them I have the PDF stored and linked to, which is really, really great. So not only can it link to the PDF that exists online, but if you download the PDF, you can link it up to, um, to a resource here as well. So, uh, this is great. This is wonderful. You can very simply now right click on the thing and click uh, create bibliography from item. I'll show you how to get these styles, but you can pick uh, any one of these things. I'll pick this journal style, click OK. And very easily, doesn't matter what um, word processor you're using, I can go to the very end in my bibli bibliography and just uh, paste it in place over here like that okay sorry for that weird extra paste that came out that was HTML um, so that's one very simple way to use Zotero but of course you don't want to stop there I mean you can but uh, you might want to use some of the more interesting tools so that if you go back to the uh, download page you'll see that there's also a connector and when you install it for your web browser and it could be Chrome it could be Firefox um, and in other browsers here. I think you probably can do it for Microsoft Edge and Safari as well. And what it does is it gives you a little, this is Chrome that I'm using, a little button here that lets you scrape something from the web and put it into Zotero. Now that could be a web page that I'm looking at right now and I could just click this button and it would bring in the web page with a snapshot. So if I'm citing a web page, that's great. But what's really great is that it connects to Google Scholar. So let's just search for something. Uh, you know, I'm an archaeologist, so I'll put uh, Anasazi collapse. That's a topic that is kind of interesting. And I get a whole bunch of sources, and I can even download the PDFs, right? So firstly, I'll show you um, if I just want the citations. Normally, you can just copy and paste the citation from here. But now you see this Zotero button has changed to a little folder. And if I click it, I get a list of all the things that are on this particular page in Google Scholar. And if I want, I can just 
tap on all the ones. I can actually tap on more than one if I wanted to. I'm just going to do one since it's easier to show you that way. And um, this is the one that I want. And I'll click OK. I get a little thing that says saving to Zotero. And if I go back to Zotero over here, all of a sudden, here it is. This is the citation. And if I click on the little carrot, you can see that it has a links to the full text because the PDF was available in Google Scholar. Now, this is really cool because it automatically brought in all the title and the name of the author and the publication and everything like that. And sometimes if it has it, it'll bring, um, it'll bring in the, the abstract as well. So that's great. It works with Google Scholar. Here's one that's on JSTOR, which is a journal um, uh, archive, a database of some kind, right? And if I'm over here on JSTOR, we can see that now the Google, uh, sorry, the Zotero button has, looks like a little document. And it says, okay, that means I can just click it. And I don't get a little list because there's only one article on this page, but it's putting it in to my Zotero. Here it is, Costanza. Now, what's kind of funny is that I already have this, this particular one, uh, uh, this particular reference already in my Zotero. So now I have kind of two copies of it. Um, so you can see it like that. Now, if I have a double, I can just delete it if I wanted to move item to trash. And that way I don't have, you know, doubles in my Zotero library cluttering it up. Uh, but that's really cool, right? So it doesn't matter whether I'm in uh, Google Scholar or if I'm at a journal page or if I'm actually at the uh, SDSU library search page. So if I go back to just find and I go to my OneSearch, um, which is the typical way that you would go about finding books and stuff that are in the library. So I will just um, search for same thing. Oops, yeah, typo. Sorry about that. Uh, of course, I'm not signed in, but if I click on any one of these things over here, you can actually see the Zotero button pops up over here. And now I can actually pick those same citations just the same way I did when I was searching in Google Scholar. And I could bring them over as well. Okay, so the Zotero connector does that for us, right? It lets us scrape in the, you know, whatever it is we're looking at into your central Zotero database. Now, how do I get the citation from here into my uh, paper that I was writing without having to manually copy and paste? Well, whether you're using Google Docs, whether you're using uh, Microsoft Office, or uh, the sort of freeware version called LibreOffice, you get what's called Cite While You Write Tools, as long as you have the right connector installed. And you can see I have this Zotero menu item in my Google Docs. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and put my cursor where I want to put my citation. Um, I'm going to give it one space after the last word. And um, excuse that. And I'll go to Zotero and I'll put Add Edit Citation. And now i am got to log in. I have multiple accounts. So you log in and it says allow Zotero access to Google Docs. You allow. And oops, I logged in on the wrong. See, this is the problem with multiple accounts. I got to log in with my SDSU <laughs> ID and allow. Sorry about that. Now, it gives me this little box right here called Quick Format Citation. So I was looking at Dave Abbott's paper before, so I'll just type in, start typing in the name Abbott. And it will automatically search through my big Zotero library and find me all the papers I have by Abbott. And here's the one that I downloaded from Google Scholar earlier, uh, Abbott 1985. So I just tap it like that. And at this point, I can hit Enter. And it does this little thing, and you can see that Abbott 1985 was inserted. And so I can go down to the end of my paper, type in bibli oops, bibliography. And what I can do now is hit Zotero 
and hit Add Edit Bibliography, and it will go through the paper and find all the citations that I've put in that way that I just did, and it will add them to the bibliography automatically. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, what if I wanted to, uh, you know, sometimes when you're writing, you can say something like uh, Costanza 1999 or whatever it was says that that's also true, right? You know, you, you want to use the author's name and the way you're supposed to do the in-text citation is just parentheses and the date. Well, if I can type it out like that and then add Costanza manually, but a simpler way is to put Costanzo and then right in between, you see there's a space on either side, I will go to Zotero and edit citation the same way. So there's Costanza, it's 2007, and I'll click on it. And instead of hitting enter right away, I can click on this and I get some options right here. So I can hit suppress author and I can hit enter to come back to here and enter one more time. And now it automatically puts the date, the proper date, and it links it to the bibliography. So there's Costanza over here. Um, another thing you might want to do is to put a little prefix or a suffix in front of, you know, the author and date. So, um, other authors also say it's true. And I might want to put, you know, in my citations, E period G period comma, which means for example, and then I would list a bunch of authors. Well, I can do that completely from within Zotero. So I will go back to my Zotero add citation, and I will just type in just names and see if I get some um, Uh, let's just randomly find another one. Um, uh, okay, so I have three of them, and they automatically pick the right order. So I click the first one, and here where it says prefix, I can put E period G period comma space. And you can see the EG shows up over here. And I could do the same thing with the last one. Um, so I'll hit enter, I'll click on Smith. And I mean, this isn't something you might want to do, but you can put and others <laughs> if you wanted to. I'm just doing it to show you that you can put a suffix. And then it's going to format it. And here I have my E period, G period, comma, Ford, you know, 1954, Barth, 1961, Smith, 1986, and others. It all shows up there. And look, Barth, Ford, and Smith are all in my bibliography automatically. That's cool. What if I send this in now and my professor uh, says, oh, I didn't want that style. I wanted you to put it in some other, you know, reference style. Well, if you were doing this manually, this is when you'd have your freak out moment because you have a lot of work in front of you, a sleepless night. Here with Zotero, what you can do is go to document preferences and you got a list of styles to choose from, and they say, I really wanted you to put it in Chicago Manual style author date. So you click that, click OK, and it does its little thing, and take a look at that. Your bibliography is now in the completely different format. And the same thing with your in-text citations, if necessary. For example, let's say they wanted um, a citation preference that uses like superscript numbers. So I think uh, nature is like that. So we'll click OK. It'll do its thing. And now you can see how they have these superscript 1, superscript 2, e.g. 3, 4, 5, and others. Now that would be a real pain if you had to do that uh, manually. And also the order is the order in which they're introduced. And so it's real difficult to keep track of that kind of thing just sort of on your own. The software makes it so easy. Well, how do you get all these styles, you may be asking. It's pretty simple. You go to the Zotero Styles uh, repository, and you could just scroll through to find a journal, or you can sort by, uh, you know, you can search, or you can sort by discipline. In fact, they have anthropology, and all the different anthropology styles are here. 
And essentially, let's just say you want an evolutionary anthropology and shows you an example of what it looks like. Um, it says, add citations to Alta Zotero. You click OK, boom. And you now have evolutionary anthropology in your list of options for formatting the bibliography. So let's do that since we're in here right now. We'll find um, that one that we just added, which was, I'm already forgetting because my brain is scattered. Uh, I don't know, was it this one? Hold on. I have to remember what I, which one I actually added. It was evolutionary anthropology. Uh, this is what happens when you get old folks. Okay, uh, let's actually do evolutionary anthropology because I do want to demonstrate that you can, it's just that simple. Um, I'll find my E's, A, B, C, D, where are they? E, F, there it is, evolutionary anthropology, right there. And bam, our paper is gonna update, and now we are in the evolutionary anthropology style. See, so it's just that easy. There's just one or two little, little tick trips, uh, um, tips I want to show you. Um, one thing is that you always have to have Zotero open in the background while you're writing. If, for example, I closed my Zotero like that and I went to add another citation here and I go up to Zotero like so and I say add it, it will say, uh-oh, is Zotero running? So then you just have to go however you start Zotero in your, um, in your computer. And once Zotero's up, you can then add the citation. That's a freak out moment that some students have. Uh, I just don't want you to bother with, uh, you know, just I want you to know that in advance. Another sort of pro tip is um, what's happening on the left over here. You can create collections over here. So you have your main library, which is this top thing. And all your citations are automatically going to go in there. But let's say you have a topic. Here's a class on, uh, I taught on the Anthropocene. I can start curating just the citations for this topic. And here's a class I taught in 602, all the course readings I put into this particular one. You know, I have different topics. And what you can do is, let's say this is one you want to drag over. Well, you can drag it over, uh, what is this one, Nomads? I think I have. Let's just put it into this one, which is about the same thing. And in there, you now have that particular one that you dragged over. So this is a way of simplifying this, you know, if you get, like me, 3,000 or so references, this is a way of simplifying and organizing my references. You can also search. So I can just search for anyone named Smith up here. And if there's any author named Smith, it's going to find it there like so. I can um, clean that up and I can sort by keyword here. So pastoralism, for example. All these are now related to pastoralism. So that's super useful, particularly because uh, it very often scrapes in the abstract. And if you download and link a PDF, it may even do a full text search of the PDF. Um, if you're over here in Google Scholar, Let's go back to Google Scholar and uh, let's find our um, Costanza paper. And you click on PDF like so and it shows up. You can download a copy of that and I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now. It has this weird number oftentimes, but you download the paper and then you're back over here. I'm going to search for Costanza. Okay, so there's my Costanza 2007. Now I already have one connected here, but I'll just show you. You go up to this little add attachment and attach link to a file. And then for me, it's just recent downloads. I click open and there's the PDF right there. Now I can double click this and the PDF I download will open and it will be linked within the citation in Zotero, which is super useful for doing research. The other thing that you can do is add notes if you wanted to. So for example, if you're reading a paper and you want to say, this paper is all about the Anasaz Anasazi collapse. 
it was important for me because, and you can take all kinds of notes, whatever you wanted to over here. I don't really want this note in my particular Zotero, so I'm going to delete it. Um, but you can totally do that, right? If you wanted to. Um, and here's the note, and you can manage the notes and delete the notes any way you want. Um, you can also tag them, just like with hashtags, and so you can sort based on tags. Now, I don't tend to do a lot of that kind of stuff myself, but you might find it very useful, and some people do. Okay, so in the end, uh, whether you choose Zotero, EndNote, Mendeley, or some other uh, citation manager, I think hopefully this little video has shown you how useful it can be. And eventually, especially as you go through your upper division coursework, um, and if you do go on to graduate school especially, you're going to see that it is indispensable to start using a citation manager. It's going to save you a lot of time and heartache when things go wrong, which they inevitably will do. Hopefully that was helpful, and if you have any questions, let me know.